everyone, welcome to the next episode. We're here at Nivergon Campsite. We're joined today by Mark Heath, who's the Kent Dragonfly Recorder and has got access to the site. So thanks for letting me come along, Mark. No problem, no problem. Welcome. We're looking for hairy dragonfly today in this pond. What's the odds of finding it and where's the best place to look? Um, they're a difficult nymph to find. Yeah. Um, they do like the reeds that have kind of broken off and sunk um, and they will cling to them. They're one of the hardest nymphs, I think, to find when you tend to find them. They, they close their legs up tight, so they literally look like a little stick. And if you're not aware, you will easily catch them without even realising and, and then put them back. Unlike other nymphs, which will happily crawl around, yeah. these just sit tight. I think that's why they're one of the hardest to find, but our chances are good. The weather's great, so yeah. we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a good go. Yeah, it's just, uh, probably the warmest day in April so far, I think. Nice, uh, yeah. So what else are we like to find in this pond? Azure damselfly nymph today, uh, blue tail. Emperor Dragonfly, Four Spotted Chaser, Broad Bodied Chaser, um, possibly Emerald, Common Emerald, Migrant Hawker, they may well be, you might get the odd nymph for them. A good range of species. Yeah, I, th um, I think that's fair to say. <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully a hairy dragonfly nymph. Right, well, let's get dipping and see what we can find. Right, we're still looking. We've found a few damselfly nymphs, but I just want to quickly show you what we've caught in here. So here you can see we've got a male smooth newt. So there's a spoon for scale, he's about normal size. But we've got a free spine stickleback, look at the size of it. A little bit of a monster that one. Right, well we've spent an hour looking. Have we found any? Let's have a look in the trays. So here we have what we found. We've got a, my findings on the left, marks in the middle, plus a little pot at the end, which we'll come to. So this is what I found. We've got some sort of leech crawling around here. A couple of nice lesser water boatmen, one there, and a number of damselfly nymphs. What do you reckon these are, Mark? I would guess they're probably azure damselfly or blue tail damselfly. Yeah, so it's probably. Um, I'm sure if we had a proper proper look at them we could definitely ID them. Now this is a, a little public service announcement for anyone that likes to do pond dipping. This is a great diving beetle larva. This is a half grown one so they get even bigger. If you go pond dipping make sure you take that out of the tray because it will eat everything in the tray. This is Mark's tray which is far more impressive certainly in terms of Odonata. We've got the same damselfly nymphs we had earlier but we've also got now let's see if we can remember which way around it was. We've got a chaser and a skimmer dragonfly nymph. Do you remember which way around which one was? I think this, I think this one here is possibly black-tailed skimmer. Yeah, so black-tailed skimmer and broad-bodied chaser here. They look quite similar, but Mark's got the hand lens out and checked out the front of their mouth parts, which is the way to do it. Um, I'll talk a bit more about that later. Um, we also have a darter nymph. So it could be common or ruddy here, couldn't it? Common or ruddy darter, yeah. Too small to tell them apart. They're quite hard to tell apart, even they full are, grown, yeah. aren't they? We've got some really cool things. We've got an alderfly larva here. So a saucer bug swimming around. Looks like a diving beetle, but it's actually a type of true bug. And we have an emperor nymph in here as well somewhere. Over in the corner there, there he is. All four main types of uh, yeah, good. dragonfly nymphs. That's a good haul. But did we get a hairy? Well, this is my first ever hairy dragonfly nymph. Now you can see it's quite similar to the emperor dragonfly nymph in shape because it's part of the same hawker type dragonfly group. <laughs> He's got himself on his back, here he goes. And you can see him squirting water out his backside there to move around. But I'll cover more on that when we go into the detail on the nymphs. Now we did have a look in this pond behind us here, but there wasn't much to be found. There's quite a few species been seen as adults around here, isn't there? Yeah, it's, a, it's a, an excellent range for, for, for quite a small campsite as such. Yeah. Um, I think I've had over 20 species of dragonfly and damselfly. Wow. Um, and I'm fingers crossed hoping that this pool behind us may yield southern migrant hawker. I had 15 here last year and I'm hoping that maybe the nymphs will be in here. We haven't found any today, mm. but I will aim to come back and um, have a good look for them. Um, very special as it's an inland site. 
Um, yeah. At the moment, a lot of other migrant hawkers are coastal. Certainly are in Essex. So this yeah. could be um, this could be great news um, if you know we can get a colony uh, established here. Um, also, one of the best sites in Britain, I would say, for willow emerald. Oh yes, uh, the famous willow emerald. Again, for quite a small site, I've had nearly 400 on a day count and have plenty of visitors that actually do come camping here mm. purely for the wildlife now, um, oh, brilliant. which is very good. Oh, sounds like I need to come back in late summer for Willow Emerald then. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I wish you well on your tour this year oh, and thank you um, much. hopefully you can come back uh, when the adults are flying and um, join me and uh, enjoy them. Oh, definitely. That sounds good. Okay. Right. Well, that's it for me. See you in the next episode, guys. Bye.